go ahead and get started. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, I'm Janine Miatan. Some of you might be familiar with me. I've hosted a few of these in the past, uh, and I'm the events programming manager here at Meetup. I am so excited for today's event. Um, we are joined by our special guest, Kathy Poitras, uh, a renowned Canadian artist and organizer of the Meetup group Discover Your Inner Artist. Um, she is going to lead a guided coloring session where you'll learn new techniques for uh, this timeless hobby. Uh, during this session or during this very soothing event, uh, you will also have the opportunity to color one of Kathy's original uh, coloring sheets designed to help you get into a flow state and enjoy yourself. I hope uh, most of you had a chance to print uh, the coloring sheet that Kathy is going to work on today. There was a link included in the event page. Um, okay, before we get started, I'm going to go over the event guidelines and the agenda. So for the event guidelines, so this event is being recorded, as I mentioned before, uh, the only people that are appear appearing on video and that you will be able to hear are myself and Kathy. Uh, and if you have to leave early by chance, you can find the recording and the recap of this event on our blog at meetup.com slash blog. Um, again, everyone is muted. The only people that you'll be able to hear uh, is Kathy and myself. Um, we encourage you to ask questions at the end. We hold 15 minutes at the end of the event for Q&A. So we encourage you to ask whatever questions you might have for Kathy. Uh, you can submit your questions in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. And lastly, we also have closed captioning. Thank you, Zoom, for this great feature. Uh, you can turn it on by simply just clicking on the live stream, live transcription transcription, if I can talk, icon at the bottom of your screen and you can select your preference. As for the agenda, we're briefly doing the introductions and I will quickly introduce uh, Kathy in a second, um, followed by the demo with Kathy where she's going to guide you through a very soothing coloring session. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, we will then come, I will then come back on the screen and ask Kathy some of the questions, whatever you know, time, amount of time we have for the questions, uh, I will ask them to Kathy then. So without further ado, I am going to introduce Kathy. Um, so Kathy Poitras, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, Kathy was immersed, so immersed in her own imagination that she barely made it out of kindergarten. Mm. <laughs> always busily, busily imagining a magical world around her. She romanticized about ev just about everything she saw. And I'm just like, you can see it in like, you know, your drawings and your colorings. Um, Thank you. So she knew she was an artist. There were many barriers to her actually getting to the place she needed to be to accomplish this. She was in her early 30s when she actually started painting. She has sold over 300 original paintings, countless hand handmade art cards, and reproductions of her work. Uh, Kathy, thank you so much for joining us. I am going to step off the screen so that okay. I can let Kathy take it away, but I will see y'all again in 40 minutes. Great. Hello. Thank you so much for that wonderful um, introduction, Janine. I'm so excited uh, to be sharing an hour of Color Your Own with everybody. And thank you so much for joining me. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to um, share my screen and do a quick PowerPoint presentation and then get right into the coloring demonstration. So here I am sharing my screen with you all. And let's see here. I'm going to do my little quick slideshow. Okay, great. So several years ago, there seemed to be a boom in adult coloring. I think adults finally caught on to this wonderful, relaxing, and creative activity that kids were participating in for years. As an artist, the thing I love about it is it creates a platform for inspiration and creative collaboration. I'm excited to share with you the inspirations behind my picture, Stormy Waters. One day, hubby and I were walking through Stanley Park toward the seawall. The waves were so loud, we could hear them in the park. When we arrived at the beach, the tide was moving fast, the waves lapping up against the seawall. Thus the painting Stormy Waters was born. The coloring page you're using today is inspired by that painting. Oh, it looks like I skipped ahead. Hang on, see if I can 
fix that. Oh yeah, okay, sorry about that. Um, anyway, it's inspired by this painting, Stormy Waters, and you can see that the page itself uh, is not exactly the same as the painting. This is the, the coloring page is a drawing that I did uh, inspired by the painting. Uh, what I call happy boats is a favorite theme of mine. I imagine colorful boats wilting in the water. Here are some paintings from my happy boat series. I live by the ocean and mountains in North Vancouver, BC, and I'm inspired every time I go for a walk. Sometimes I imagine myself and my hubby going on a whimsical sailboat adventure. So here I have a, di a few different ones. Uh, Peaceful Journey, which is a watercolor and in ink. Um, Lazy Day, acrylic on canvas. Deep Cove, which is a watercolor and in ink. My, one of my very favorites and uh, in Infinite Goddess watercolor and ink. And this is a more recent uh, painting. As a note, the way I started my artistic journey is I decided to paint a hundred sheets of paper. I made the decision to complete each painting no matter what and to let my emotions and whims dictate where I would take it. I was after emotion and communication. I mention it here for those of you who are thinking of starting an artistic journey. It was a powerful way for me to start. I didn't say, oh, that one is no good and trash it. I just kept going. By the time I finished the 100 sheets of paper, I had learned so much. Here are a couple of examples of those works. So fairy painting, which I did in, I think, 1986 and uh, Feeling Great, which is also 1986. Uh, both are fairly large paintings. Um, and out of that 100, I think I sold like 65 of those first paintings. So that was very exciting for me. And um, anyway, I'm going to start my presentation now, my demonstration, and I'll be switching from the PowerPoint to my coloring page. So let's color. You can follow along or create your own. Okay, I'm just gonna get my camera onto my page. Okay, great. Okay, so I think you guys can all see that. And I'm just gonna get started. So before I start, I wanna give you guys a tip, which is, um, when you print something um, on your computer, sometimes the toner, um, when you color with a marker, it sort of bleeds into the marker. And I personally hate that. So I'm gonna give you a tip on how you can prevent that from happening. So if you take your crayon and draw over the line, which is, that you plan on using marker on, which I'm doing here for my wave. And I hope you can see what I'm doing. And, and then you can, that wax from the crayon is gonna seal in that toner. Then I'm gonna take my uh, marker and draw over the crayon and I have prevented that problem. So anyway, uh, for my wave, we're, get, we're I'm starting right in on the picture. So for my wave, I'm coloring the, the crest of the wave with the green, with a lime green color in marker. You can uh, do it however you wanna do it, but I'm trying to make it look, uh, look light because I want it to stand out and I want it to catch the light of the image of the sun over here. Okay, so I've got that part done. And then I'm gonna highlight these little spots in here with yellow. So I'm just gonna go with my yellow right there. So. Great, so I'm, I'm happy with that. And don't worry if you can't keep up or if you, you know, I've been doing this for a long time so I can go pretty quick, but 
Uh, you know, I'm just trying to give you guys tips on, on a possible way to color this. You don't have to use the, you know, you don't have to do it the way I would. So I'm going to go on to the next thing, which is my son. So in my mind, this sun is a sunset sun. At least that's how I feel about it at the moment. When I painted the picture originally, I don't think that's what I was thinking. But right now I see it as a sunset sun. So I'm going to use some crayon and very gently, I'm going to use a few different colors. I'm starting with orange and I'm going to gently just color in the sun with my orange crayon. And it's because I'm using a few different colors, I don't have to fill everything in right away because the other colors are gonna do that for me. And I wanna also outline it uh, with a, maybe a yellow marker. So here's my yellow marker. I'm just gonna outline the sun here with the marker. like so whoops there we go one thing i love about coloring is it's you know it's it's not very committal like you can start working on a piece and if you're not happy with what you're doing you can always just start again the picture is already created for you and, uh, you know, you can always experiment, which is a great way to learn. So I've got my orange, I've got some yellow, I'm going to uh, get some pink. This is my favorite pink color. You can tell it's, uh oh, I dropped it. <laughs> you can tell it's my favorite because it's just a little tiny piece available for me because I keep breaking it. Anyway, here you go. I'm going to just color in some of this sun with the pink. And uh, I'm going, you know, a different direction than I colored the orange. Just to create like a certain effect that I like. And yeah, so. And then I'm gonna take a look at what I've done. Here we go. Okay, okay, so here, here's what I've got so far. And I think I need a little bit of red in there. So I'm just gonna add, I've got this sort of dark pink, it's sort of like a reddy pink, and I'm just gonna add that to the edges to give it a bit of a fiery look. So what coloring is all about just doing what you feel like, you know? So right now I feel like having this sun have a bit of a fiery look. Great, I've, I've done what I like to the sun. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm ready to move on to my next thing, which is my puffy cloud. I love my puffy cloud. I wanna keep it looking very puffy. I'm an avid cloud watcher. Um, I love going down to the seashore and sitting there, looking at the mountains, looking at the clouds. There's always an incredible show of clouds over the mountains. And I totally love that. So I'm gonna use my yellow marker again. Well, first I'm gonna do it in crayon. I don't want uh, the color to bleed into my cloud. So I'm just tracing the line with the yellow crayon, like so. And then I am gonna use my yellow marker over the crayon. This is like a goldy yellow marker that I'm using. And I am going to, I think I'll just leave it maybe just a little bit of a pink color inside and just like that. Okay, and I am done, my cloud. So I think it, it has kept its puffiness um, and it looks like the sun is reflecting off of it. So I'm pretty happy with that. 
Okay, so for the sky, I am looking to have my sky uh, look like a dramatic sunset sky. So I'm going to start that with, um, I think I'll start it with this pink. I really, you know, when you look at the sunset, you see this pink in the sky. And I'm just going to go crazy and put pink all over the sky, sort of like the Aurora Borealis, just, you know, big sheets of pink in the sky. Um, because I, I feel like sunsets are kind of like that. They just have these beautiful reflections of light. And uh, great. So I've got that. And now I'm going to add another color to it. And I'm using crayon once again for my other color. And I'm thinking this greeny blue is going to look really beautiful in there. Just along the pink lines, pink edges like this. Okay, might be too dark. Okay, so I've got my pinky lines. Okay, and I'm going to, let me see, I think some orange, just to sort of tie it in at the edges here. and yellow, yellow right near the mountains, coming off the clouds. Okay. Okay, so I've got this dramatic sky. You don't have to do, do it this way. I just thought, thought it would be fun and I felt like doing it. So that's what coloring is all about. What do you feel like doing? Just go ahead and do it. So um, my next thing that I'm gonna show you is the hull of the boat. So the hull of the boat is this part here. So it's, you know, and I have this uh, little story I like to tell about it. In my imagination, the hull of the boat was created by these master craftsmen and they carved this beautiful hull and somehow, for some reason, I don't know why, they're like a cross between Viking and elf. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, that's where my head goes. So um, to do the hull of the boat, I'm going to color my these spaces here. There's like these spaces in the hull. And I'm going to color them yellow. And this one is too maybe orange. Let me see. Sometimes I get my crayons mixed up with uh, by not putting the lid on properly on the right crayon. Anyway, I'm gonna color it yellow. So starting down here. And I don't really care if any of the ink gets in there because it's, it's just um, gonna work because I'm gonna be coloring over it with brown after I'm done doing this. So I'm coloring it with yellow here. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to color these lines, all, all these alternating lines of my hull with a brown marker. So the way I'm doing that is just like this. So there's these little lines in your picture and I'm going to color every second one brown. And it just creates a nice effect. Okay. Let me see. All right. Okay, and I've got some more here to do. And here. 
Okay, so now I've colored all those little lines, every second line brown, and it's starting to look more and more like a hull of a boat made out of wood. And now I'm gonna take a brown crayon, if I can find my brown crayon, and I'm gonna color over all of it very lightly with this brown crayon. So starting at the bottom there, and that's gonna fill in the rest of the lines. And it's also gonna sort of mix it together, but it doesn't like, um, it just, I just like the effect of it. So it's like by coloring in over the yellow and the brown lines that I created with a brown crayon. Okay, all right, and there's my, my hull. So now the next thing that I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna be coloring the sail. So for the sail, um, let's exercise our imaginations. This beautiful floral sail um, was created, like we're imagining now, this beautiful floral sail was created by these ladies, the famous ladies of the sewing circle. And they meet every Wednesday afternoon under the maple tree to make sails for the happy boats. It's a pleasurable and industrious gathering. Mildred always bakes something delicious and Annette makes ice cream, tea, and they um, have lots of goodies. In my demonstration, I'll try to bring to life the concept of the silk sails by using a combination of markers and crayon. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm taking this uh, purple marker and I'm gonna outline the flower petals with it. And you know, you could even go an extra mile if you really wanted to make it look like it was a sewn thing. Uh, you could take a pen and you could draw the little stitches in there, but I'm not gonna go that far right now because that would take a long time. But um, if I was on my own, I probably would do it. So I'm outlining the sail, the, the petals, and I'm just gonna outline them here with my purple, it's like this beautiful purple color, um, a beautiful purple felt color like that. So I'm gonna do both sides here. Okay, and this one here, All right, and then for the inside of the petals, I'm gonna take this pink, well, one side I'm gonna do with crayon and the other side I'm gonna do with marker because I wanna see how different it looks. So start, starting with this pink, I'm coloring the inside of one side of the petals on in the sail. Okay. Okay, so I've done that side and I I really like it. I think it looks really nice. And then on this other side, I'm gonna try it with a light pink marker. And like for my markers, I usually just get whatever's available at the grocery store, um, which is usually Crayola. I'm, I'm quite happy with them for coloring. Um, you know, they're very inexpensive and I like the texture of them. I like the way they look. So, okay, so I've got two different effects. This side here with crayon and this side here with marker. And I'm happy with both of them. The next thing I'm gonna do is the green leaves. And um, 
Let me just get my markers ready. So I'm gonna use these two colors for the leaves. I'm gonna use the dark green to outline them and I'm gonna use the light green to color inside. So here I go. So I'm outlining these little leaves and I know that most plants don't have little leaves in that location, but you know, you can do pretty much anything you want when you're creating fantasy art. So um, that's what I do. And here we go. I'm doing my leaves. And I'm going to color them in with the lime green. So this side, I'm going to do the same experiment. This side, I'm going to color them in with the marker on each leaf, like so. And this other side, I am going to color it with crayon. And I can't, I don't see a lime green crayon here. So I'm just going to use this green and see how that looks. It's, it's like so much softer than the marker. So I really like the texture you get by using both. Okay, so you can see that's what that's what it looks like with the crayon in the middle. And that's what it looks like with the marker in the middle. So you can see there's a difference there. Okay, great. So now I'm gonna do the inside of the flower. And to do that, I'm gonna take a purple marker and I'm just gonna draw around those little seeds that are inside the flower. And uh, I would imagine that these being uh, part of an applique made by these ladies, you know, somebody sat there and embroidered all these little seeds. And I'm like kind of a crazy artist because I'll finish this and go and embroider something with a bunch of little seeds. <laughs> so that's, I just go nuts on this stuff. So anyway, here we go. I've got my little seeds and I've colored them in like around them with the marker. And now I just want to lightly go over it with crayon. So I can just finish it off by lightly coloring over those seeds with my crayon there. And I'll just quickly do the other side, but just for some contrast, I'm gonna do the other side using a dark blue. And I'm gonna just circle those, go around those little seeds with my dark blue, like that. And then I'm gonna, again, use the purple to color it in and see how I feel about that effect. And I like it, it's, I like, I like the differences. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the rest of the sale. So I want this sale to be a sort of bluey green color. I've, I like this color for the outline. Um, can you go get the rest of the crayons? Um, I like the color for the outline. And I'm going to look for a complementary color to color on the inside. And I think I found it there with my crayon. So here, here we go. Okay, so I'm outlining the sail with this sort of, uh, it's like a bluey, really soft bluey green color. And I'm going like this. It almost looks a little bit gray, which is not really what I'm after. So I've done that side, so I'll finish this side. But I think for the other side, I want something even more blue. So I'm gonna use this one. And I'm gonna, yeah, I like that better. Okay, so I'm gonna copy, right? trace over those lines with the marker. And then, see, I'm liking that look. So 
Now I'm going to color it in with this crayon, another broken crayon for us. So, okay, here we go. All right. And I'm coloring both sides the same color. All right. Okay, I think that sale is lovely. I really like it. So now we're going to move on to the next part. So this is um, really a lot of fun. I'm going to do the waves. I'm going to start uh, getting into the waves here. So I'm going to start with my dark blue marker. And in this, I'm just trying to show it to you guys, right under here. So every second line, I'm going to, to color with this dark blue marker. And this wave goes all the way down here to behind here. So I'm going to do that. All right. I hope you guys are enjoying. And if you're not following along, it's totally fine. And if you do want to follow along and it's gotten, you know, it's too fast, you will be able to access the recording um, on Meetup. And also, I believe you'll be able to post your pictures um, that you color, which I think is fantastic. So I, I would love to see the pictures that everybody's done. Okay, I'm doing the sides of the waves here as well. Well, it's not the side, it's just the side on the painting. <laughs> okay, I'm using my dark blue marker. And I hope you guys are not hearing the construction that I'm hearing in the background. Okay, I'm got that there. All right. Okay, so here you're getting an idea of what it looks like. And I'm gonna just move my page a little bit for easier access. This is something that, you know, I do all the time is I just turn my page around so that I can get closer to it. So I'm almost done this part. Okay. I love that. It's very dramatic looking and um, it's creating kind of a 3D effect. I think the picture is coming along really great. So now we're gonna go and do these other lines. So where, what I would normally do is pick a lighter color uh, to go there, uh, like a lighter blue perhaps. So I'm picking, I'm gonna pick this color and I'm gonna do some in marker and some in crayon, you know, just to see the difference. So here we go. So, oh, I like that. That's a great light blue. I really want this wave to be very dramatic because it is a an important part of the picture. It's like this wave is the wave that this boat is coming in on. Um, I imagine the boat is coming over to a mysterious shore and we don't even know what's on that shore. That's up to our imagination. So here is here, I'm just, yeah, I'm really, really happy with that color. So I'm going to keep going here. And, you know, you can just touch up as you go because 
it doesn't have to be perfect. It's, um, you know, it's coloring. Although if you, you know, if you're one of the people that loves to color to perfection, I, my hat goes off to you. I've seen some incredible art uh, that Color Your Own has uh, inspired. So I'm just, but for me, um, for coloring right now, especially since I'm in a bit of a hurry in that I'm, you know, we don't really have time to spend a couple of hours on this piece um, here together. I'm going for effect more than perfection. <laughs> I guess that's the way to say it. Anyway, I'm going to add a little bit more blue over here. And this dark blue, I want to put it over here. And just for the very last little bit, I got kind of carried away. Oh, I can do it over here too. I'm going to use my crayon just to see what kind of effect it creates. And I like that too. It's it's really a nice uh, blue color, this blue that I'm using, which is um, Cerulean. I'm probably saying it wrong, but it's quite a beautiful, really beautiful blue. And I broke the crayon, which is something I do quite a lot. I used to go to my mother Tape it together, mom. I broke it. Anyway, I've been coloring for a long time, as you can probably uh, deduce. Okay, here we go. I've got my, oh, that, I think that blue is, is really nice as well. Anyway, I do prefer, still prefer this one, and I'm going to finish it up over here um, with this color blue. All right, so we got one big wave done and now I'm gonna go into the wave in the foreground, which is right over here. So I'm gonna use yellow for this part of the wave here. Because I think it would catch some sunlight. And that's why I'm gonna use yellow. And I'm gonna add some green over here. Okay. All right, so that's the crest of my wave in the foreground. And I will be doing the same thing I did here, over here. But I think I'll be using uh, some slightly different colors. I haven't really decided yet. Um, I think right now I'm going to go into this part here where the... Um, the waves have these flower shapes. So I'm just going to get started on that. And for that one, I'm going to use uh, this crayon, you can, this little tiny crayon. And I'm just every other line in these flower shapes is what I'm going to color. I don't actually think that's going to work. Let me see. I'm going to select. I think I'll do a, this blue right here. Okay, so I'm getting started with this. Okay, every other line. Oh, that's quite lovely. I love that blue. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going there. I'll take, I'll do a portion of it. It's gonna take a little bit of time to do the whole thing, but I'll just do a portion of it to give you an idea of, you know, one thing you could do with it um, to create an interesting effect. So here, we'll get this flower 
idea happening here. It's, it's really interesting when I color, I discover colors that I sort of think of them as like old friends, right? Because I went through a period of time in my art where this particular color I'm using right now was my absolutely favorite color in the whole world. And all my paintings had a lot of this color in it. And then I started to favor another color, but I'm like, I'm visiting an old friend. That's how I feel because I do love this color. It's really, really gorgeous. And color is so much about emotion. But to me, this is like a very jewel-y, like it looks like a jewel and uh, like a beautiful, I, I can think of my flower shapes as these beautiful jewels in the water. And that is really a lot of fun for me. And that's kind of where my head goes. So, okay. So here's, I've colored part of that flower. And now I'm going to use another color to go over it. I'm going to color it over it in crayon. So I'm just going to pick, I think I, I'm going to use this color here. Um, <laughs> no, I've changed my mind. <laughs> what I'm going to do is actually use this purple. So let's see, I'm going to go on the around those lines that I just made, all the other space in that wave, I'm gonna color with this purple. So I'm gonna fill in these lines like that. Yeah, I like that. So it's that was just a whimsical decision that I just made there. And uh, most art, at least the kind of art I do, is just a bunch of whimsical decisions. It's like, you're just, you're doing it and you're just inspired and you just go with it. And that is what creates the art. So here, I'm just gonna finish this here. Okay. Yeah, I really like this purple next to this blue. Okay, let's see here, just fill it in. So you see the effect it's creating there. It's kind of dark, but I do like it. So um, as I move forward in coloring this floral area, I might use some brighter, lighter colors as well. But I think for this part, like this part that's going over here, I'm gonna keep with the dark, with the dark colors. So now um, I'm gonna start working on the mountain because um, I don't think I have time to totally color in all of these waves. How much time do we have left? Well, this is in at one. Um, at quarter two. Well, it's quarter two. Oh, okay. I think we could squeeze in five more minutes. Sure. Okay. Okay, we're gonna squeeze in five more minutes before more we minutes. end up. Four more minutes. So I wanna get into these mountains here, these flowery mountains, I start to think they remind me of the idea of candy mountains, but um, I love flowers and I live in an environment that has a lot of flowers in it, in nature, and I just love adding them to my work. So I would start with the flowers, um, if, if coloring in this mountain area, and I like to just outline the petals uh, and keep them white. So, and I like to put a little, like make it like a little heart, put a little like loop, that, not a loop, but just a little line at the center. So see how I'm doing it there? I know I didn't draw it into the original painting, but you can do it as you're, as you're coloring. So you just go like this, with this little loop or line. It's not really a loop. It's just a motion there that I'm using uh, for the flowers. 
Okay. And then I would just color the leaves with my lime green marker. Okay. And I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna take a chance and make it yellow. Yellow is a really strong color. So for the center, I'm gonna make it yellow, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep with that. But anyway, we're out of time for the coloring demonstration. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Okay. Hi, Kathy. Hi, did I stop sharing my screen? Uh, well, yeah, but you just need to move your um, your camera back up so that we can see your face again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, higher, higher. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. Oh, good. <laughs> just listening to your voice was like so relaxing and so soothing. Thank oh, you nice. so much for doing this. We have quite a few questions from the audience. Oh, great. So I'm going to dive right in. I Hopefully we can answer a, a, quite a chunk of them. Um, so great. the first question, I think it's iBooth. I'm not sure how you pronounce the name. Um, asked, do you recommend music or silence during coloring? Oh, I love music during coloring. I just pick, sometimes I just play the same song over and over again. Um, during a meetup, I won't play music because I don't really know what people are going to like. <laughs> but, but you know, it's to have your own music on is really relaxing. What type of music do you normally play? I like, um, you know, I like like folk music or I like, um, I think it's called the Flower Duet. There's like a classical song that I really enjoy. Um, Joni Mitchell, um, soft rock, really. Very nice. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Pocono, po Pocono Pam, great tip about using crayon prior to using marker to seal in ink. Will this okay. also work with alcohol markers? I think so. I'm not 100% sure, but just the idea that you're putting wax over the ink, it is going to help. Seal. It'll help seal it for sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Nicole and Miranda asked, does it make a dip, does it make a difference if you use different coloring materials, for example, washable markers? Well, I'm using washable markers myself. Um, I just go, you know, all markers make a difference, but like you can buy markers for a hundred dollars for 20 markers, or you can go to the store and buy markers, uh, you know, 60 markers for like ten dollars. <laughs> I usually do that. But uh, if I'm making a fine art piece, I might invest in the more expensive markers. Rupal asked, is it okay to use felt tip pens? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Tariq asked, sorry, uh, I'm sorry, do you sharpen the crayons with with a sharpener or do you just use them and they sharpen along the way? I do both. Um, I usually end up breaking the crayon when I try to sharpen it with a sharpener. You so that. <laughs> what you can do is just uh, take your crayon and peel away the paper and just take a piece of paper and just color on the side really, really hard, and it'll sort of shred it into the shape that you want. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. L asked, or a statement before a question, crayons are a new idea for me. I currently lean toward markers and or pencil crayons. Can you share your perspective on pencil crayons versus crayon? I think they're similar in a way because pencil crayon can be used, like I like the crayons for a soft effect uh, in my coloring, uh, but pencil crayons do that as well. Um, crayons, I like crayons for doing backgrounds because it's much faster. 
like they cover, they, there's more coverage with one stroke than with the tip of the pencil crayon. Although I can see how you could go on the side of your pencil crayon and get the same effect. So I think it's just a matter of preference. I prefer crayons. Thank you, Cassie. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Susan asked, I'm sorry, Suzanne asked, what color crayons did you use today? Oh, that is such a good question. And I didn't, I didn't really write it down or anything. Um, I, they're definitely magenta, turquoise. Um, I've got pink, like I've got this hot pink. I don't know what color it is because I broke it a long time ago. And, um, I'm not, I used yellow, orange. Mm -hmm. What is that? green? Green. I use lime green. I use like a, a dark green. I use brown. Okay. So I wasn't sorry. I wasn't really keeping track. I just like what I like to do when I'm coloring is I lay them all out in a box so that I can just grab whatever one is uh, that I think is going to work. But I feel like you use like the basic colors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much like. I use this beautiful sort of bluey green. There's that pink. I definitely use purple, orange, yellow. Blue, light blue. blue. Yeah, light blue. Brown. Yeah. Yeah, turquoise. There's definitely turquoise in there. there uh, turquoise is one of my favorite, favorite colors. I love turquoise too. I, I see do. that you're wearing turquoise today. I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Someone asked the techniques that you share today, will they also work with pencil, with colored pencils? I'm assuming they're asking. I think they will. I think they okay. will. It's a matter of how much pressure you put on that pencil. The pencils that you use today, how long have you had them for? Oh, gee. I just bought these. <laughs> I I have so many markers, it's ridiculous. I have like just cans, like big coffee cans full, but I wanted to have brand new ones for this. So I just bought Aww. them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, let's see. What other questions do we have for you? Um, some folks are asking about where they can purchase uh, your work. So we're going to share some links. Uh, oh, great on where they can get some of your coloring pages. Yes, that's awesome. Um, I think the link I gave you just had this coloring page that we just did, but if they get in there on my website, um, they should be able to find all the coloring pages. So we'll be sharing that as well. Great. The link to your website, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, someone just asked a really great question. Um, <laughs> Anonymous asks, can you revive dried out markers? That's a great, great question. What a great question. Um, you might try wetting the tip and like, but I don't think you can. <laughs> yes, I think okay. it's best to put the lid back on. <laughs> okay, so it looks like you're going to have to go and buy new markers. So yeah, we just posted in the chat um, the oh, link uh, to your website and to your coloring pages. Um, oh, and thank you so much for answering all these questions, Kathy. And thank you so much for joining us today. This was thank a lot you. of fun. I can't yeah. wait uh, to watch this back, you know, to watch this again and then start coloring myself. Oh, fantastic. Um, so before we go, we're going to share a couple more slides. Sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, so as, as Kathy mentioned earlier, we wanted to encourage everyone to share uh, their artwork, whatever they worked on today on social media. Um, so just share your coloring sheet uh, and please tag Meetup and also use the hashtag relaxing with Meetup. Uh, we're also going to put this in uh, the chat so that you can have it. Um, right. Yeah, and we will be liking and reposting some of your beautiful artwork. So again, if you, you know, whatever work you did today, uh, we'd love to see mm -hmm. it on social media. We'd love to like it. We're going to like it and we're going to repost it. So just tag Meetup uh, and use the hashtag uh, relaxing with Meetup. Thank you. Next right. slide, please. 
Okay, so I guess I'll give you a minute to continue to write down uh, the meetup uh, hashtag. And um, so, okay, if you have a moment, you can pull out your phone and scan this QR code uh, or take down this, uh, wow, what? I'm just like having a really hard time finding my words, or take down this link, meetupodcast.com. Uh, last year, we launched, launched a podcast with our CEO where we talk about community, connection, friendships, uh, and he interviews an array of different experts in the topics as well as meetup organizers. So again, please take out your phone and download this QR code. Kathy did it. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> um, or You're just welcome go on the site, uh, meetuppodcast.com. Again, thank you so much for joining us today, Kathy. This was so much fun. And thank you everyone thank for you. joining us. Uh, we will see you next time and have a great day. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.